<clears throat> Good night from Metro Manila of the Philippines, Southeastern Asia. The topic of this brief video lesson is the assassination of the first official president of the uh, Republic of Poland, of the modern Republic of Poland, I should say, uh, Mr. Gabriel Narutowicz. It happened on December the 16th, 1922. Just seven days or one week after the Polish parliament had in a tight, fairly tight election elected him uh, with um, a group of center-left parties supporting him over the right-wing candidate. Um, he had been reluctant to declare himself a presidential candidate, but had then considered it as his patriotic duty uh, to accept the presidential candidacy's offer and then to accept his election. It came only five days after he had been sworn in officially as the Polish president and only two days after he had formally visited the uh, Belvedere uh, Palace where uh, the restored Poland's first head of state, Marshal Józef Piłsudski, had been living. This was a very tragic event because uh, President Narutowicz wanted to reconcile between those Poles who had supported him and those Poles who had opposed him and definitely did not want to have um, a confrontational divisive atmosphere in Poland. Unfortunately, he had very few days uh, to try to carry out his program of re reconciliation. So who was he and why and how and by whom was he assassinated? Gabriel Narutowicz was a Polish professor of hydroelectric engineering. He had been born on March the 17th, 1865 in Telsze, which then belonged uh, to the Russian portion of the Polish regions. And as I said, he died, he was assassinated on uh, December the 16th, 1922 in Warsaw, the Polish capital. He was born into a Polish aristocratic family with strong patriotic sentiment. He studied first at the University of St. Petersburg in the Russian imperial capital. He then moved uh, to Switzerland and completed his studies at Zurich Polytechnic College. And he became an engineer and was a pioneer of electrification and his works were presented at ex exhibitions across Western Europe. He also directed the construction of the first European hydroelectric power plants in uh, Montai, Mühleberg, and Andelsbuch. In 1907, he became a professor of hydroelectric and water engineering in Zurich, and uh, later he was assigned uh, to maintain the Rhine River. In September 1919, he was invited by the Polish authorities to rebuild the nation's infrastructure after devastation caused by the First World War. Uh, Poland uh, had had much fighting in its territory starting already in 1914. And Germany had quite heavy handedly occupied the country despite uh, offering it a nominal independence as the Kingdom of Poland in 1916. In June 1920, Mr. Narutowicz became the Minister of Public Works in the government of Prime Minister Władysław Grabski. He successfully uh, led the Polish delegation at the Genoa Conference and in June 1922, he became the Polish foreign minister in Prime Minister Artur Śliwiński's cabinet. 
So who did, opposed him? The uh, biggest party of Poland at the time, the right-wing National Democratic Party, and far-right Catholic unions and the nationalists denounced him for openly sympathizing with the Polish Jews. Some 10% of Poland's population at the time was Jewish. Uh, his opponent was the National Democratic candidate, Mr. Maurizi Zamoyski. He was a non-practicing Roman Catholic and an active Freemason, participating in rituals throughout the Freemasonic rituals throughout Poland. His brother Stanisław, interestingly enough, became a Lithuanian citizen in 1918 after that country regained independence and was one of the people who signed the Lithuanian Act of Independence. Mr. Narutovich never officially belonged to a political party. He was known as a moderate, reasonable, and broad-minded man. In 1922, he represented Poland at a conference in Tallinn, Estonia. In the 1922 Polish parliamentary elections, he supported the center-right National Public Union connected with the head of state, uh, Marshal Józef Piłsudski. Himself, he was a candidate of the Public Union on Eastern Borderlands, but was defeated in that election. <clears throat> And it was his great surprise that he was nominated by the center-left uh, parties or the mainstream center-left parties um, as a presidential candidate. Marshal Piłsudski actually tried to persuade him to withdraw his candidacy, but eventually, although with a great deal of hesitation, he accepted the candidacy. Poland at the time was basically a parliamentary republic <clears throat> where the president had only limited powers. Uh, generally speaking, his uh, decrees in order to be become valid had to be countersigned or confirmed by the signatures of the prime minister and then the appropriate cabinet minister under whose jurisdiction uh, those uh, decrees um, were. One of the independent powers, well, one of the more independent powers, and even that one was conditional one, that the Polish president did have and during that republic was the power to uh, dissolve uh, the same or the parliament's lower house, but uh, the Senate had to approve it. And he did have a suspensive veto, which the same uh, needed a 55% majority to override. And under that constitution, it was the parliament which elected the president, which of course went a long way towards making the president more or less dependent on the parliament, especially um, before um, Marshal Piłsudski's May coup in 1926, which made Poland into a military dictatorship, which then became more severe starting in 1930. <clears throat> so the main left-wing parties, the representatives for national minorities, uh, led by Germans and Jews, and the centrist Polish People's Party, or Polish Peasants Party, Piast, um, supported Mr. Narutowicz, and the support of the uh, Polish People's Party, Piast, <clears throat> faction was a surprise, because at first it had backed Mr. Zamoyski. So 289 members of the Polish parliament voted for Narutowicz. Zamoyski only won 227 votes. 
And immediately the anti zamoyski I'm sorry, the anti narutovich propaganda intensified, uh, led by certain Catholic and nationalist groups. They announced Mr. Narutovich, or now President-elect Narutovich, as an atheist, a Freemason, and some extremists even called him a Jew. The anti piłsudski faction, supported by General Josef Haller, also criticized the president-elect's overall support for Piłsudski's policies. While uh, Mr. Narutowicz was being sworn in as the Polish president on December the 11th, 1922, <clears throat> members of the National Democratic Party <clears throat> and other uh, right-wing nationalist groups um, organized anti-government demonstrations in Warsaw. Earlier that day, opponents of his election even attempted to prevent him from entering the parliamentary chamber by blocking uh, the nearby streets and by throwing mud at his motorcade. He himself was never comfortable with the widespread, widespread belief that he was a representative of the left in Polish politics. <clears throat> During his first days after taking office, uh, President Narutovich met with the representatives of the Christian Democratic Party and Cardinal Alexander Kakovsky. He realized that a majority government could not be formed because the parliament was so deeply divided, so he tried to create a government beyond the purview of parliament. And he even offered the post of foreign minister to his rival Zamoyski in order to appease the right-wing polls. And he formally then uh, visited uh, Marshal Piłsudski in the Belvedere Palace on December the 14th, 1922, to complete the transition of power. Um, Marshal Piłsudski had served as the temporary head of state of Poland since that country had regained independence in November 1918. And then came the tragic assassination. He participated, because it was on his schedule, in the opening of the annual Salon of the Society for the Encouragement of Fine Arts in that uh, art gallery. <clears throat> He had received death threats and then uh, less violent threats, but nevertheless um, expressions of a deep distrust in him and a deep um, disapproval of his election. Also, the Polish press was quite strongly divided on his election. <clears throat> well, Marshal Piłsudski had nevertheless uh, congratulated um, President Narutowicz um, on his election and had wished him a long life. And he tried to emphasize the importance of the presidency. And he also tried to calm down uh, the heated mood. And on December the 15th, 1922, when he was in the Belvedere uh, Palace, um, he read several private letters, including several anonymous letters. And that including one threatening letter claiming that the president had only four days and 20 hours until the deadline, uh, that he was supposedly uh, at risk of dying of a heart attack and that he should make his will. And this was supposedly the third notification. 
Late on the evening of December the 15th, 1922, Stanislav Char discussed uh, the program for December the 16th with President uh, Narutovich. And during this conversation, he mentioned the invitation to open the annual art salon in Zacheta. The president agreed to visit that uh, art gallery, Zacheta, because he did not want to give the impression that uh, he considered it an unimportant event by being absent. Um, he visited Cardinal Alexander Kofsky before arriving to Zacheta. He rode uh, in his official car, accompanied by the head of, uh, by his chief of staff, I think, Stanislav Char. Around 12.10 p.m. local time, uh, he arrived in front of the Zacheta building. And on the stairs leading to the guest building uh, was the head of the diplomatic protocol of the Count uh, Stefan Pszczecki, um, who was the chair person of Zacheta and thanked President Narutovich for arriving there. The gathered audience also applauded and even cheered President Narutovich. At 12.12 12 p.m. he entered the exhibition hall number one, located on the building's first floor. <clears throat> and while he was admiring the painting of Bronisław <clears throat> Kopczynski, depicting the frontal of the Zacheta, um, there was uh, the British ambassadorial couple, William uh, Grenfell, Max Müller and his wife. Well, I'll have to check this information. Or Grenfell. Yeah, so he was indeed the British ambassador to Poland at the time. Politely, uh, Mrs. Müller or Max Müller said, Permettez-moi, Monsieur le Président, de vous féliciter. Uh, please allow me or uh, allow me, Mr. President, to congratulate you, of course, on his election. But somewhat self-deprecatingly, uh, or ironically or sarcastically, President Narutovich replied, Oh, plutôt faire les condoléances. Oh, rather uh, to give condolences. Uh, the fact that President Narutovich was present um, in the exhibition aroused more interest uh, than the paintings collected in the uh, gallery. While he stepped in front of the painting by Theodor Ziomek Schron, a nationalist or even hyper-nationalist uh, Polish painter and art critic, uh, Mr. Eligius Niewiadomski fired uh, three revolver shots at him. Uh, the audience, of course, was armed. Uh, the president staggered and then fell to the floor. The poet Kazimiera Iwa Kovichuvna uh, was able to uh, catch his head. Prime Minister Novak called for a doctor, but the doctor Chniegotsky found that President Narutovich was already dead of pulmonary, pulmonary hemorrhage, suffocation, and cardiac arrest. Nevyadomsky was immediately arrested. He offered no resistance. Mr. Niev Niev Yadomsky had just turned 
1853 on December the 1st, 1922. He was a modernist pain, uh, painter. And he even, even had taught drawing at the Warsaw Polytechnic, had collaborated with a number of Warsaw-based magazines and newspapers as a journalist and art critic, and had be thus become um, notably well-known in Poland's artistic circles. And had become involved in various artistic movements. Politically, he was a strong nationalist, especially a supporter of the National League. In 1901, he had been arrested by the Russian Tsarist or Imperial <clears throat> Police for smuggling nationalist propaganda booklets from Galicia, which was uh, in the northern part of Austria-Hungary and a home to many Poles into uh, the Vistula land. Mr. Niev Jadomski had joined uh, the Polish army, or he yeah, had tried to join the Polish army during the Polish Soviet War in 1920, but was turned down as being too old. He was, however, accepted by the Polish military intelligence organization and had served as a translator of Russian documents. Dean mobilized in 1921. He had returned to the Polish culture ministry and co had continued his work there as a clerk. However, in November 1921, <clears throat> after Mr. Antony, Prime Minister Antony Ponikovsky's government had refused to grant Nievyadomsky, uh, Nievyadomsky's department a higher budget, he had resigned. He had then begun to write uh, about art and had prepared several monographs on the 19th and 20th century Polish painting and on the theory of art, and had made his living illustrating books. Um, Niev Jadomski had been, just like many other right-wing Poles, deeply disappointed, uh, even angry, at uh, Notovich's election. Well, as a well-known artist, um, he knew the Zacheta Art Gallery well, and as I said, he was arrested quickly. He said, I will not shoot again. He actually demanded a death penalty for himself and was indeed sentenced to death by firing squad. He was executed on January the 31st, 1923. After his ex ex execution, Mr. Niev Jadomski remained a controversial figure. Reportedly, he held a rose in one hand and shouted slogans against uh, Marshal Piłsudski's dictatorship, despite the fact that Piłsudski was no longer in office, Stanisław Wojciechowski uh, had been chosen in late December uh, 1922 to replace the assassinated Gabriel Narutowicz. But this <clears throat> showed how a delicate uh, the balance of power was in Poland, um, how strong and even vicious the political passions were on the part of many people, and despite the fact that President Narutowicz during the very few days when he could serve as president tried to calm those um, passions, ugly passions, and to speak out in favor of moderation, um, too many people ignored him. In retrospect, he probably should not have gone to the art gallery, or at least there should have been strict screening of the guests there, and he should have been under a heavy guard. Less than two and a half years later, in, I'm sorry, less than three and a half years later, um, in May 1926, Marshal Piłsudski uh, overthrew the legitimate president and government and established a military dictatorship, uh, himself becoming prime minister, 
uh, serving in that position since uh, until 1928, and again for uh, some months in 1930. But after his death in 1935, um, none of his successors had the same charisma and popularity as he had had, and uh, they had to rely more on the state machinery and on the army's machinery to keep the dictatorship uh, at least outwardly strong. Thank you so much for listening and have a nice weekend.